And in this show today, we're going to go over some of the things that was said in this article, especially an incident that Alex Jones has wanted buried forever. And this is the night that he got his ass kicked in a parking lot and then threatened to, or maybe he did, snitch to the FBI. He did. The FBI that he says he has relatives in. So, yeah, please. Yeah. Shelley Tumbleson is a cable access producer and actually worked at the same uh, station as Alex Jones in Austin, Texas. So this guy knows him firsthand, and uh, it's curious that this doesn't get uh, talked about more on the Internet. But, you know, brother. Now, Lisa, let's get to it. Let's get to the big fight. And right here. Let's set this up. That the parking lot? The parking lot fight. This, this is, is called the parking lot incident. Yeah. And this is notorious in Austin alternative media. And, you know, instead of telling the story, <laughs> why don't we just, I'm going to have Lisa read it. And this. Okay. Yeah. A fellow producer related this story to Shelley Tumbleson. Tumbleson almost would have, well, he would have been there. But he didn't want to be where Alex Jones was. So somebody else told him about it that works with him. <laughs> uh, Alex challenged a man to step outside into the parking lot. This man had ridiculed him, I guess, called him a jarhead. Yeah. I, I mean, it was common yeah. there to call him Jarhead Jones. Yeah, and they, this guy would call into Alex's show and prank him, okay? Yeah, and so Alex didn't like him calling in. He would do it to all the shows, but apparently he really liked calling in and pranking Alex. And uh, so he challenges this guy to step outside. This man, Steve, they're calling him Steve, took him up on it. The guy said, okay, let's go. Now, Alex said, Just read it verbatim. Just read it. Okay, he said, he challenged a man to step outside. The man took him up on it and whipped him like the little bitch that he is. Not being able to accept defeat, Alex claimed that four men with knives attacked him to stifle his free speech. Okay, many, many of us have been that humiliated in our lifetimes. But then, he got Daddy to call in a favor, and he actually got the FBI to go to this defunct bookstore, now defunct, named Fringeware, to find this guy's address. He did this by concocting a story of the guy, supposedly the guy that he was in a fight with, being one of the leaders of a terrorist organization, and he also made charges that this guy had child pornography. Now, remember yeah. when Alex was at the border, uh -huh. the Canadian border? What was one of the things he said that they suspected him of, supposedly, yeah. having child pornography on his computer. Yeah, Interesting. yeah. Interesting. Yeah, and why, why would this keep coming up like but that? But there's something else. Here, look, when the cops came, the cops were called, okay? Uh, when the cops came in, of course, Alex was the one bleeding all over the place. Uh, when the cops came, Alex was ranting and changing his story with each breath began to talk of his importance and his family's wealth and his relatives in the FBI. Wait, let, me, let me read this before we get to it. There's another part of it. This is a long article, and it goes all yeah, over the place. Yeah, trying to pick excerpts. Yeah. Okay, so upon arriving, C and company, a total of three guys, were talking to whoever was at the desk, and Sir Jarhead, the booger elf, a.k.a. Jarhead, recognized his voice and began to berate him as best his little mind could manage. C is actually very smart, and he was calmly pointing out Jarhead's swelling example of fascism. Jarhead became louder and louder, begging C to step outside. This is when Steve said, and I quote, I can't believe you're acting like this because he called you a Jarhead. He spun around and focused his fury on, on this guy. When he said, S step outside and I'll whip you like my bitch, this guy said, okay, let's go, and led the way. Okay, Jarhead then hesitates. Then followed, as did Charlie from this guy and another guy named Kanya. Okay, so Jarhead's next. This is all right from the article. I think that's a woman. Oh, yeah. Okay. Well, Jarhead's next brave move was to announce that he had a gun and began foraging around in his truck. <laughs> See, <laughs> Steve said, "Oh, now you're gonna shoot me, you pussy." Jarhead came from the truck with his hand in his pocket and slowly advanced towards Steve. Steve retreated two or three steps, then said, then shoot me, and promptly nailed Jarhead with a right hook. <laughs> they both just stood there for what seemed like a long time. Then Steve let many more fly. Jarhead tried to throw one. That's right, one punch, which grazed Steve's nose, like flicking at a booger. At this point, Iggy came out of the studio. <laughs> Jarhead saw him and screamed for him to go get Bob. So they went in to get reinforcement for Alex. So 
would, Bob came running out to see Jarhead bleeding profusely and shouting, They jumped me with knives! Charlie disputed this, so Jarhead spit blood on him. So Charlie, bless him, punched him right in the mason jar of a head. <laughs> so when the cops came, Jarhead was ranting and changing his story with each breath and began to talk of his importance and his family's wealth and his relatives and, and the, the FBI. FBI. Wow. Hmm. Now, Lisa, a few months ago we got criticized. That's such a classic visual. Yeah. Yeah, here's Alex bleeding all over the place, ranting and raving that he's going to call. No, the part about the guy, you know, the guy uh, punching him in the nose. Yeah. After Alex spit on him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Alex spits blood on him, so the guy pops him another one in the head. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so. Um, <coughs> yeah, we did. We did get a lot of heat. See, we actually were attacked yeah. by, by psychos. We really were attacked by a bunch of thugs. Yeah. On the internet. And as we said... And we did have to call the law. But look what Alex did years ago. Yeah. And see, as I said, anybody, any man out there that would see the type of abuse that Lisa had to endure, if this happened to their mother, their wife, or it's their sister, happening. or daughter, yeah, and it's still happening, if this would happen to any of their wives, or mothers, or daughters, or sisters, they would do the absolute thing. Yet all of Alex Jones's little groupies conveniently seem to forget that Alex was the one that challenged this guy to a fight. Oh, Alex by, the way, by the way, Alex knows that people have been reading this, this parking lot incident, this, this guy Tumbleson's website, synesthetic.com, and... Uh, Tumbleson's friend told him, Alex wants this removed. And, of course, it's not still removed, but just in case it is, we have it on our website. Yeah, exactly, and this one won't be removed. So Alex challenges the guy to a fight. Alex is the one popping off to him. Alex is the one that challenges him to go out in the parking lot. Yeah, Alex started the whole, the whole, in, the yeah. whole thing, and it reminds me of Bolin. Yeah. With the police. Yeah. So when they go out, when the guy says, yeah, let's go out in the parking lot, then Alex is taken aback, and he knows that if he doesn't go out, then he's going to look like a big pussy. So what does Alex do? He says he has a gun in his truck. And so what does he do? The finger in the pocket? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> like like five-year-old kids used to do when they're playing cowboys and Indians. So this guy whoops Alex's ass. Alex is bleeding all over the place. And it turns out that... The people that didn't get charges pressed again, Alex tried. Tried yeah. to get them in trouble with the law. He made up a story about the guy being a leader of a terrorist organization and having child porn yeah. to get the, the feds drawn into it. And the feds ended up looking into it and dropping the matter. Yeah. So now all of... So where's your proof, Alex? Yeah. So all of, why aren't all these people talking about Alex Jones calling the FBI? Yeah. Alex Jones being a narc. Alex Jones you know being a snitch. Because when you're one with God, like Alex yeah. is, you can do anything you want, and people won't bat an eye. Yeah. Now, this is a notorious story in Austin, Texas. Everybody in the alternative media and the Patriot <laughs> movement funny. knows about it. Well, and wait. Now, we have to tell Alex's side of it. Okay. According to Alex's version, Alex got jumped by four thugs with knives. Yeah. Now, he walked away from this uncut. And okay, except he, he was bleeding because he got punched in the nose, and he got popped a few times by the guy that he mouthed off to to begin yeah. with. But uh, if you're jumped by four, four guys, four men with knives, how do you come away from that without a cut on you? And what Alex's people did then you was, know, a knife cut. was start calling all these little radio shows and yeah. telling Alex the side of the That's story. That's what happened the next day. Yeah. All, he had all his minions call every radio his and access members. show. To tell his side of the story. That Alex was jumped by four terrorists. And then when Tumbleson's, you know, the anti-Alex camp tried to call those same shows to present the other side of the story, they were not allowed to. Yeah. Gee, imagine that. Just like Radio Free Austin. That doesn't happen now, does it?